So this is the trailer that goes with Baby Shap, as we call it. It's a Magic Tilt. Um, I'm not a fan of the Magic Tilt trailers uh, because they're pretty much cookie cutter and they cut every corner that I possibly can. Um, if you look on the front here, you'll see they just cut it off at the end. There's not what's called a double wrap um, where both beams wrap, uh, both eye beams wrap to the center tongue. That makes a big difference, especially when you're building in strength because the only thing you have here is the two bolts. And as you can see, they've put these little bitty spacers inside there uh, and it's bowed out. It's not a perfect fit um, because the spacers aren't aren't perfect by any means. Um, and then they just put these two little cheap straps here with little bitty 3 8 bolts. Oh, those aren't even 3 8 those are 5 16 bolts to hold it. Um, so that's pretty much the way that the front of the trailer's held on. And then they've got more spacers here to the back of the tongue and then your typical tie down engineering cookie cutter winch stand and believe it or not it's certified you know but it's junk and then you have a really junk crash uh braking system meaning that the trailer crashes into the vehicle towing it and this one's completely blown out and you have no access to get into it and fix it other than throwing it away yeah, they make bit rebuild kits, but it's really honestly not worth it. Then it has a single cross beam here. So the boat is not carpeted. I mean, the high density molecular plastic works great until it starts failing and then it breaks up and makes a mess out of it. Um, so we'll end up putting another, another beam right there and putting a series of bunks on it most likely all within the next couple days the axle as you can see is completely corroded and rusted out all the way across it's actually split in the middle on the bottom um, just totally rusted the brakes are junk the brake bracket is also completely corroding away as you can see there the flange is just flaking away the wheels are all rusted um, and then it's again, once back to cookie cutter, you got these really crapped out bolts, brackets, and everything else. We'll end up having to eat the plasma cutter in here and cutting all that away just to make it work. Your garden variety bias ply tires that are already starting to separate. Yeah, I had to haul this all the way from Anderson, South Carolina, which is a few hours away. And this is a, another indication of a shitty trailer. Sorry, Magic Tilt, y'all build junk. I haven't seen a trailer y'all build that's worth shit. This is where they cut costs. Notice the bunk comes all the way out here, another three and a half, four feet from the back of the trailer. Now, typically the lights are set up right here, okay? So imagine you're coming up behind this boat at nighttime. This is where the transom of the boat is. Then you have the swim platform, the outdrive. So your outdrive is a good, well, here's the brand new stainless axles here. That's eight feet. So the back of your boat is eight feet from the world's shittiest lighting system, which is held together with what? Scotch locks and a regular incandescent bulb. Do you think someone that's driving at night in a car is looking up? No, 90% of people are looking down at their damn cell phone. So <clears throat> this, is, this is what I talk about when I'm talking about really junky trailers, crappy lighting, bad wiring, just poor construction all through and through. So stay tuned. We'll start showing some updates of what we're gonna do with this thing.
so now that I have this suspended in the air, let's look at why this trailer is so poorly designed. For one, these axles are rusting from the inside out. They put a bend in the axle, but did not put drill a drain hole in it and then coat the axle so that it wouldn't rust from the inside out. Water gets in through the torsion um, and through the, the, the part there, through the holes drilled in it <clears throat> to mount the brake, uh, brake tee right there. And it just simply corrodes from the inside out. The case in point is they replaced one of the axles, but didn't replace the other one. Um, and if we can figure out the date on this, yeah, that one was warrantied out in 2006. So you'd think that they would, you know, drill a hole in the second one. But no, they didn't. And again, this is a saltwater trailer made in South Florida. And none of these items are galvanized. None of them. Though they got the good stainless brakes on it. But they didn't do anything else to save it from eating itself alive. So we're going to break out the plasma cutter in a minute and cut these axles off. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun watching this shit fall down to the ground. Again, you're building a saltwater trailer. It's being used in a saltwater environment. Just put aluminum or, you know, stainless, no stainless hardware, all the hardware is shot. Um, and another reason I hate these trailers is because, check this out, like I was saying, to see the, the brake lights, you're eight feet behind the boat. They cut the frame off right here and then add another four feet Oh, it's got a reflector on it. Seriously? Such piss poor, you know, design. And this is, this is why, you know, people want to compete with the trailers that I build. And I tell them it's going to be 10, 15, 20 grand to build them a custom trailer. And I go, well, I can buy a trailer for four grand. This is what 3,000 to four grand buys you. And it's junk absolute junk you, you you couldn't come up with a weaker design than this you just can't look at this, look at this hardware completely corroded through it's junk but we're gonna make it better we're gonna make it a lot better we got these new axles stainless hubs stainless bearing buddy stainless adjustable spline ends that way we can get this boat trailer nice and low so it's easy to put down the boat ramp easy to trail
so here's our midday uh, update we've got all of the lines are now run um, the kit that I was given was shorted uh, several all the hoses all the flex hoses were missing so I had to supply four actually five hoses um, and it's really frustrating because Eastern Marine is typically on point with everything that I need and it's always in a kit and unfortunately the kit did not come with any of these rubber hoses luckily I had another kit that I had bought and I had replaced it with all stainless steel flex lines like this. Um, this is actually a really high, high dollar part, but I had no other option because what kit they pulled must have been for a single axle trailer, not a tandem axle trailer. And my bad for not checking it before I, I um, you know, took delivery of the part. So uh, a little, a little issue on both my part and theirs not having all the right pieces together but you know i do so many of these uh it's a good thing that i always have spare pieces left over so nonetheless i've got the brake lines out of the way so as this travels through its motion this line doesn't hit the frame i cannot tell you how many trailers i've picked up pulled transported and within you know, a day's time of travel, this line has bounced up and in. Because when these come out of the out of the box, this is at a 90 degree angle. So imagine this line going straight out here would immediately hit this and snap right off. I just don't understand um, a lot of the thought behind the, the fasteners and stuff. So I'll give you a rundown. The line's gonna come from the front of the trailer over here to the other side. Um, at the other side is two junction blocks. One distributes to the forward axle there. The other one goes to the rear axle and also tees off. Comes across here, all stainless, all riveted down. Um, so it can't go anywhere. I have this over here because I don't want this to vibrate. These tend to have an issue of vibration. So it's secured here and it also, I have an extra heavy duty zip tie right there to secure it. I've got all the pieces are off stand off so they're not rubbing on this. They're close here, but they're not rubbing at all. I had to put a loop, I had to bend a loop. I'll go on the other side in a minute and I'll show you the loop. All smooth bends, got all the, the pins in the retain. So this side's pretty much done. Let me go walk around to the other side. Okay, now we're over here. This is actually the right side of the trailer, but for today it's the left side, at least until I flip this thing back over. As I say, I've got this line, I gotta secure it to the side. We're gonna zip tie it to the frame rail so it has some flexibility because the trailer flexes. You don't wanna put those down with um, the hard fasteners like this right here. This won't flex, this won't move. But this line here will grow shorter and longer as the front of the trailer flex carrying the weight. So we do this one last. I got fluid coming in here, coming up to this point here. This goes to the second junction block. Um, this will come up and go to this axle here. I bent this to keep it completely off the trailer. Um, the reason you don't want these on the trailer is because if, if you use it in salt water and you have it laying against the frame without anything in between it, sometimes you get salt and corrosion in there and you have to get that out. Um, again, I got this standing off of the, the, uh, the axle beam itself. Um, and over here, again, just like the other side, all these are lines that I had to supply. I put a loop in it here, one to take up the extra distance, but also because this is so close to the junction and the initial hit, um, this caliper will start to see more pressure instantly than some of these others. So what I've done here is I've made a loop here, and then th these actual two lines are actually the same distance. So these two calipers will get the same pressure. Um, again, distributing it to the other side, hopefully that will, you know, make it so it toes really, really nicely. Anyway, that's the update for this.